Hello, everyone. Welcome to the St. Ignatius Preparatory School Virtual College Fair. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Just a few housekeeping announcements before we get started. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. Your camera and microphone are off, so the panelists will not be able to see or hear you. And this presentation is being recorded, and that recording will be available within about a week at strivescan.com slash Ignatius. And now I'd like to go ahead and turn things over to our presenters, starting first with the University of Oklahoma. Awesome. Thank you, Andy, and welcome, everybody. I'm going to get my screen shared here so you can see my presentation and we will be good to go and I will start my timer. So uh, my name is Scott Hillman. I am the Chicago-based admissions counselor for the University of Oklahoma. So I'm happy to be here tonight, tell you a little bit more about OU as we go for my short um, and all the good stuff that you need to know there. Uh, I am based here in Chicago. So I am in the city, not too far from St. Ignatius. So happy to be your local rep uh, to work with you as you navigate the college search process and specifically at OU, hopefully. So OU is located in Norman, Oklahoma. So Norman is a suburb of Oklahoma City, only takes about 20 to 25 minutes to get downtown Oklahoma City from campus. So it really has the best of both worlds. Uh, it has everything that the suburbs has to offer. So if you're looking for places to go out to eat, shopping, maybe off-campus jobs, things like that, there's plenty of things to do off-campus as well as on campus. And then Oklahoma City being a short drive away, um, even more opportunities for things to explore and places to check out, or maybe even internship opportunities and other professional opportunities downtown. So pretty easy to get downtown. The airport is also about 20 minutes. So the Oklahoma City Airport, 20 minutes from campus, and there are direct flights from O'Hare and from Midway. So it's about a quick hour and a half flight, uh, maybe two hours if there's any delays, um, but quick hour and a half usually flight to get down there. Otherwise, it'd be about a 12 hour drive from the Chicago area. We have 22,000 undergraduate students. So one thing when I'm talking to prospective students about OU, they think we're a lot larger of a university, um, but 22,000 is definitely um, smaller than what they may think, but not a small school by any means. So 22,000 undergraduate students um, with that, our average class size is 32 students. So definitely a larger student population. We have a very active campus, but we want those classroom environments to be manageable in size. We don't want them to be too large or too overwhelming. So with that, only 4% of the courses that we offer to students have 100 students or more in them. So on the flip side, that means that 96% of our classes have 100 students or less. So really great classroom environments. So you're gonna to get to know other students in your classes very well. You will also get to know your professors, your faculty members very well. We have an 18 to one student to faculty ratio. So again, good classroom sizes, but with 22,000 students, definitely an active and robust student life uh, and student population. To get those 22,000 undergraduate students, we do get students from all 50 states, as well as 125 different countries around the globe. So we are very out of state friendly, so you wouldn't be the only ones coming from Illinois. Um, you can see on the map here on the screen, the darker the shade of the state, that just means the more students that we're getting from those states. So obviously Oklahoma, Texas, Kansas are neighboring states, but as far west as California, as far south east as Florida, uh, you've got Virginia and Pennsylvania, more towards the east coast that are a little bit darker in shade, but all 50 states are represented. So we are very out of state friendly. With that, 44% of our student body come from out of state. So 44% of our students graduated high school outside of Oklahoma. So you're just as likely to meet somebody from in-state, from Oklahoma, as you are out of state. Uh, so you get to meet students from all over, um, not just from Oklahoma. They're coming to OU for our 170 plus undergraduate degrees. So we've got a lot of things for all students, whether that be engineering, business, meteorology, aviation, our performing arts programs, education, health professions, and more. So 170 plus, there really is a program for all students. So really great thing to look at on our website, ou.mymajors.com. There's a nice survey there. So you can put your interests and maybe what you have an idea of what you wanna study and the results that you'll get will show OU degrees that would be of most interest to you based on your interests or based on your strengths and things like that. So definitely wanna check that out, especially if you may be more a little more undecided. We are a tier one research institution. So we are among the most active research universities in the nation. So if you're looking to have research be a part of your college experience, we definitely have that on our campus. 
We have research opportunities for all of our students, not just upperclassmen, but freshmen, sophomores, and then the juniors and seniors can all get involved with research. We have 550 student organizations, so a lot of different things for students to choose from on campus. If we were to have some OU students here in the room tonight, you, and if you were to ask them if they're involved in anything, I'd say they would at least have one thing that they're involved with. So very common thing to be involved on a student club or organization on campus. 30% of our students study abroad, so that's also a popular option for our students. Uh, we've got 80 different countries in 200 different cities around the globe that our students are going to for maybe a traditional semester long experience or some shorter ones, maybe a few weeks in the summertime um, or even shorter ones than that. So a range of programs to get you around the globe and have it tie back to your OU degree. We are available for campus tours. So if you're looking to visit campus, uh, either this spring or summer, we have campus tour dates posted from now through the end of July. So there'll be a few Saturday programs a month and then Monday through Friday, there'll be a variety of programs as well. So if you wanna sign up for a campus tour, definitely check us out online and get signed up for the summertime. And then once it gets closer to fall, we'll post fall dates as well. I know that not everybody's traveling right now. So if you would like to just do everything virtually, we have a virtual campus tour with our virtual resources. We have other admissions webinars, um, sessions on financial aid and scholarships, and a lot of other things digitally that you can access now in a virtual setting. So if you can't travel, definitely check out our virtual resources. Check us out online at GoToOU is our handle for our social media. So Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. And you can contact me if you have any questions. So I'll drop my email here in the chat, uh, as well as my direct phone number. So if you have any questions after today, you can reach out. And I again, thank you for joining tonight. All right, thank you so much to the University of Oklahoma. And next up, we have the University of Alabama. Hi, everyone. My name is Allison Pollock, and I'm the Chicago-based Regional Admissions Representative for the University of Alabama. We go by many names to students. It's UA, Bama, the capstone, or even the school that says Roll Tide. But however you know us, hopefully we can teach you something new about the university today. The University of Alabama is located in Tuscaloosa. So Tuscaloosa is about 10 hours from the Chicagoland area. Students do make the drive to campus or even carpool because we do have a lot of Illinois students that attend UA, or we are just a short flight to Birmingham Airport which is about 45 minutes from our campus. And there are shuttles that will take you from the airport to campus and back. In Tuscaloosa, there's a lot to experience with the great outdoors. We have three lakes within 30 minutes of campus. Our UA Recreation Center, you can rent kayaks and canoes and even the straps to put them on your car to go to one of these lakes um, for an adventure. We are also about three and a half hours from the beach, um, so very different from being close to Lake Shore. there. The beach is going to be warm seasonally. It's a lot different in Alabama. Our winter is about uh, two months long, and we had a record-breaking one-fourth of an inch of snow. So to put that in comparison to Chicago, that's how much snow you got here in April. So if you're looking for a change in weather, come on down to Tuscaloosa. We'd be happy to have you. For our on-campus population, we have about 37,000 students total. 32,000 of those students are in our undergraduate population. We have students from every state in the United States, and I'm happy to report that for the third year running, Illinois is our third most represented state on campus. So that just goes to show that any fears that you have about going out of state or going to a different region of the United States for college, so many students from Illinois have charted this path before you and have not only attended UA, but also have thrived at UA as well. So if you mention Portillo's on our campus, people are gonna know what you're talking about. Now with such a large out-of-state population, we also have a lot of opportunities for students when it comes to student organizations, majors, and then different educational opportunities as well. We have over 200 academic degree programs after this presentation here, I'll go ahead and post a link to our different majors so you can explore those a little further. A couple programs I'd like to highlight. Um, some of our programs that are nationally recognized would be our public relations program is ranked number one by PR Weekly. Our accounting program is top 10 in the United States. We have a top 10 public law school. And then also our nursing school just underwent a 32,000 square foot expansion and it will positively impact our acceptance rates moving forward. More good news out of the nursing school, the past two graduating classes 
pass the NCLEX with 100% pass rate. So that is awesome. So those are just a few programs to highlight. We do have really great and flexible opportunities for education abroad. Undergraduate research can start as early as your freshman year, and you don't have to be a part of the Honors College to do undergraduate research. We have this really great program called Emerging Scholars that you can apply for as an incoming freshman. With that being said, we do have seven Honors College programs. The general one is called University Honors Program, and then we have six focused programs that focus on different um, emphasis areas like Randall Research Scholars or McCullough Institute of Pre-Medical Scholars or University Fellows Experience where they do great community work in the Black Belt of Alabama. So you do have to apply to these programs separately after you are admitted to the university. To cover those admission requirements, our application on our website does open in July, but we are also on the Common App. So you can apply through one or the other of those applications. We will be test optional for fall of 2022, continuing our policy from this year. Test optional means that test scores are optional, so you can still submit them. And we do encourage you to do so to maximize your scholarship opportunities. But if you haven't had access to testing, we completely understand. And we do have alternative scholarship opportunities for you as well. Listed on the screen here is our recommended good criteria for academic admission. So these are great guidelines to follow moving forward. But as always, no essay, no interview, or no recommendation letters required in our application process. As an out-of-state student, I want to make sure you put your best foot forward. So I highly recommend applying to the university before September 1st, just to give yourself the best advantage in our housing process and also for full scholarship consideration. To give you an idea of where our scholarships start, I think it's helpful to show where our average is for our freshman class on campus. So I do want to emphasize that this is not our criteria to be accepted into the university, but does offer a good framework for where our scholarships will start for fall of 2022 students. The best part about being a UA student has to be that great balance between academic and student life. We have over 600 student organizations on campus, multiple dining options, including several Chick-fil-A's, the largest Starbucks on a college campus in the United States, and a variety of other options close to campus with meal plan options in the traditional sense, as well as dining dollars as well. To give you an idea of what the year ahead will look like, this is just a timeline of when to apply to UA and then when you would ultimately commit to the university around May of your senior year. During that timeline, we would love for you to visit us on campus. We are currently hosting campus tours and have dates posted all throughout the summer. Students are required to register in advance and you can bring a maximum of two guests with you on your campus tour. If you have any other questions, this is my contact information and I'll also post it in the chat. But with that being said, just wanna send everyone a big roll tide. Thanks for coming. All right, thank you to the University of Alabama. And next up we have Nova Southeastern University. All right, thank you. I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen here. Hi everyone, welcome to Nova Southeastern University. My name is Cesar Mendros. I am your admissions counselor. I'm just gonna point out a couple of things here. NSU is a private research university. We're one of 50 universities, Carnegie Foundation classification of high research activity and community engagement. Um, the undergraduate students here at NSU, we are uh, we have around 5,600. That is considered a small to a medium um, for a private university. Um, it is really important because that allows us to have around 17 um, to 19 students per classroom, which is important um, to get to know your classmates and your professors, and also your professors get to know you, um, which is crucial for letters of recommendation, um, if you're looking for internships, jobs, and research opportunity. Also here at NSU, you will have a dedicated career coach for four years. So what that means is they're going to help you with your resume, cover letters, mock interviews, finding internship and jobs in South Florida, Illinois, California, wherever that may be. We do have a wide array of um, undergraduate programs here at NSU, um, from art, humanities and social sciences to psychology. Um, engineering, um, medicine, and also marine biology, since we are close to the ocean. And here at NSU, we do have um, a premier program 
Um, part of the premier program is Farquhar Honors College. We are one of 200 universities in the US um, that uh, host the Honors College in a university. We do raise as edge scholars. Um, if you get into this program, you receive 24,000 as part of the scholarship. Um, we're not really looking here for academics, more on the passion side. So and there, and there are five tracks. Um, one is global, if you're interested in global issues, learning cultures and languages. Um, if you are passionate about research, if you are passionate about being a leader on campus, um, if you have a talent um, in singing, dancing, um, painting, drawing, um, you can be part of our Shark Talent. And we have Shark Teach for our students who want um, to be teachers. We also have um, dual admission programs. So what this means is this reserves you a spot in the graduate school. So if you're interested in going to medicine, osteopathic medicine, um, if you want to be a dentist, we also have in the clinical psychology part, we also have law, um, even computer science um, for our dual admission programs. Um, next one is the Fischler Academy. Um, this one's for our teach um, students who want to be teachers. Um, it's a three plus one program. If you get into this program, meaning your first three years is going to be uh, your bachelor's degree and your fourth year is going to be your master's degree. So in four years, you are going to have um, your bachelor's and your master's degree. And if you get into this program, you receive $20,000 um, as part of the scholarship and a guaranteed job placement in South Florida. Same as the Fischler Academy, the Heisinga Business Innovation Academy is also a three plus one program, meaning again, um, bachelor's degree um, the first three years and your master's on your fourth year. Um, if you get into this program, you receive 20,000 as part of a scholarship. And if you have a solid business plan, NSU is gonna give you 20,000 um, to start up your um, business and you don't have to pay us back for that. All right, living here at NSU. So we don't have a communal bathroom, meaning you don't have to share a bathroom with um, 20, 30 other students. Um, our um, residence halls here are more of like an apartment comp um, or suite style. So if you see the top part here, um, there's two bedrooms and one bathroom and the common the commons residence hall at the bottom part, um, it's more of a suite style. There are four rooms and there are two bathrooms. Um, though we don't have um, a football, uh, football team, um, we are a Division II university and we have the Miami Dolphins. So whenever we have any home games, um, we give out free tickets to the students if they have any friends and families visiting um, the campus. We have around 120 plus clubs and organizations and 99% of our students um, participate in that. We do believe in the essence theory of involvement that if you are um, at actively um, involved on campus that you do better in class. Living here in South Florida, our average temperature is around 77 degrees. Um, we are 15 minutes away from the beach and the airport. And if you wanna go to Disney, it's only three hours away. And being in the Fort Lauderdale, Miami area, we do get a lot of um, opportunities for our students, including community service events. This is the current demographics of our students. Um, their average GPA is A minus B plus, um, SAT. And we're also test optional, so this was like two years ago. Um, SAT is between 1060, 1270, and ACT is between 21 and 28. So our application opens on August 1st. And when you submit your application to NSU, you will automatically get a Dean scholarship depending on your GPA and or um, test um, ACT, SAT test scores. Um, we have three different deadlines. We have early decision, early action, and regular decision. Um, early decision meaning it is binding that when you submit your application to NSU, um, that you are attending NSU. Early action, it is non-binding, um, meaning you are highly interest, interested at NSU, but you're still looking at other universities. And we have regular decision, which is due on February 1st. So we do have um, two different portals. We have NSU Shark Select app and the Common app. And then when you submit your application to NSU, um, you then we ask you to submit um, an application for the premier programs that I just mentioned earlier. And that leads me to my last slide. Um, we are active in social media, um, especially on Instagram, and you can follow us on Snapchat, YouTube, and Facebook. I'm also gonna leave my um, contact information in the chat. Thank you. All right, thank you to Nova Southeastern University. Uh, next up, we have Chapman University. Awesome. Thank you very much. I'm excited to be here with all of you and share a little bit of information about Chapman University. My name 
is Juliet Olson. I'm an admission counselor here and I work with all of the students coming from the Illinois State. So if you're interested, I'm excited to work more with you throughout this process. All right, let's jump into it. Here is a picture of our campus. We are located in Orange County, which is in the heart of Southern California. We have a very young and modern campus, as you can see, with a lot of student engagement. To talk a little bit more about our highly desired location, here you can kind of see a macro view of where we are positioned right in between Los Angeles County and San Diego County in Orange County, which fun fact is the sixth largest county in the entire United States, spanning around 46 miles of coastline. It's a really advantageous and strategic location for students to have their college experience for a variety of reasons. One, you can think more lightheartedly on the entertainment side. There's just so much to do in the Southern California area alone. You're in such a desirable climate where people travel here from across the world for vacation. Um, and you can trust that you'll never be bored outside of campus. But we also give our students a position of success and um, advantage when you're thinking of the pre-professional sense. The opportunity in Southern California is abundant. And so a lot of our students are able to capitalize on pre-professional experiences early on. And I'll talk about that a little later in my presentation, but in Orange County alone, there are over 85,000 different companies and organizations that span across every field and industry. So truly the opportunity is abundant in that sense. I do wanna paint a little bit of a picture um, of Chapman University, who we are and the opportunities that we hold. We are the third largest um, private institution in California. Our total student body population sits just above 10,000. So we're really at that Goldilocks size. We're large enough where you're getting that culminating college experience, but we've been able to really preserve that small private education that likely you are used to in the high school environment you're coming from. You can see our average class size is 24. Our student to faculty ratio is 13 to one. So you can really trust that at Chapman, you're able to personalize your education and re receive individualized education at the same time. Um, as well as our institution houses students coming from over 48 different states, two territories, and 83 different countries. So by joining the Chapman family, you are immediately plunged into a community full of students coming from all different backgrounds and walks of life. So that really adds to the Chapman experience overall. Chapman University is kind of housed under two different umbrellas. We have liberal arts and pre-professional. What liberal arts means is essentially we empower and equip our students to have academic exploration and really get that well-rounded education. We have a wide variety of majors and minors spanning across a really wide spectrum. So you're able to have that academic exploration and that leads to a lot of our students double majoring, majoring and minoring, double minoring, and you're really able to get the most out of your college education that way. Like I said, we um, are a pre-professional institution. We really value the fact or the experience of having those hands-on experience simultaneously within your undergraduate chapter. We think it's a really integral part of Chapman students and alumni success post-grad, whether they're starting their career or going to continue to their education. Not only is our location advantageous for this, but we have a wide variety of resources, support systems, and tools on our campus to really help our students navigate that process. You can see here on this slide that 96% of our students have some type of experiential learning throughout their four years at Chapman. And then we are also an R2 accredited institution. This places us within the top 10% of research institutions across the entire country. And this doesn't only occur in the STEM majors, it really occurs throughout our institution as a whole. And you can get started as early as your first year. So again, you're really able to make the most out of your experience that way. If you ask Chapman current students or alumni, you know, what is it about Chapman that really set it apart or sold you on the institution as a whole? A lot of them would say the community. Our campus is very involved. Student engagement is high and we have over 200 different clubs and organizations to really allow our students to supplement their educational experience um, and have a life experience as well. I want to use um, my final few moments to talk about our application process. For first year admission, we have these two application deadlines. Early action, early decision is housed 
um, by our November 1 deadline and January 15th houses our regular decision applicants. We utilize the common application for our application medium, streamlines the application process. And I do want to note that we are test optional. So if you have test scores, submit them, but your application will not be at a disadvantage if you do not submit those test scores. I also want to note that at Chapman University, our private cost of tuition is on the higher side, but we have the ability to work very closely with our students and families to make that high cost of tuition attainable. Over 86% of our students and families receive some type of financial aid, so majority of them are not paying that full cost of tuition, and you can see a variety of different financial aid options we offer. Last year alone for our incoming class, we awarded over $164 million in financial aid, so there's a lot of options for you out there. All right, thank you all for tuning in. It is my pleasure to share this information with you. Here's my contact info. If you have any follow-up questions or want to get to know me and I'll share some more information and links in the chat. Thank you very much. All right, thank you to Chapman University. And next up we have Grand Canyon University. Hello, everyone. Welcome. My name is Shafaris Turner, and I am the Chicago-based admissions counselor for Grand Canyon University. Grand Canyon University is located in beautiful Phoenix, Arizona, but I am here right here on the south side of Chicago. So just a quick snapshot, we are a private Christian and affordable university, and I will touch more on that affordability piece a little later. We have over 220 academic programs. So this is ranging from undergraduate programs as well as master's and doctoral programs. We have over 20,000 ground students and that number continue to grow every year. And we are a division one athletic school. So why GCU? For one, we really focus on hands-on learning. So we have a variety of maker spaces around campus. For example, if you're interested in nursing, we have a simulation lab that looks just like a hospital to give you that full experience before going into your clinicals. If you're interested in engineering, we have a variety of makers lab like the 3D lab, robotics, et cetera. And the nice thing is that if you create something on campus, so let's say you create a product, we don't um, claim any intellectual property. So you get to keep 100% of the rights to the product that you created. We have a lot of faculty involvement. So even though we are a large university, we focus on smaller class sizes. So for our gen eds, they don't get over 100 students. And then once you get into your actual major programs, those range between 20 to max of 40. So you really get that one-on-one -on -one attention from your professors. We focus on student empowerment, ranging from student clubs, internships, and more. And again, that affordability piece. So even though we are in Phoenix, we do not charge an out-of-state tuition rate. Because of that, a lot of times we are the same cost and even cheaper than the Illinois schools here. And our application is free. So that's again, save you another cost. Again, as I mentioned, we have over 200 academic programs. In addition to what you see on the screen, we also have nursing, education programs, ranging from elementary all the way to secondary education. Uh, we have forensic psychology. So if you're a big criminal minds fan like I am, you know about Dr. Spencer Reed. Forensic psychology is um, what he does for the BAU and so much more. So if you visit our website, which is gcu.edu, there is the career compass. Um, you can fill out a profile and it will match you to the degrees that fit best with like your interests and your skills. In addition to our majors, we also have the Honors College. So we are the only university in Phoenix and in Arizona that does not charge an additional fee for our Honors College. Benefits of being about Honors College, you get faculty mentoring. There is a variety of research opportunities, uh, professional development. So what we do is every semester, multiple times throughout the semester, we bring in professionals from your interested field. That way you can talk to them about advice, how to get into the field, um, the things they go through and more. International excursion, so every student has the opportunity to study abroad. However, there are certain trips that are only open to honor students. And then we have speaker series, there's honors housing and so much more. As far as campus experience, so similar to what Caesar mentioned, we do not believe in community bathrooms at GCU. So we have dorms and apartments, and as a freshman, you can live in either one. We were actually rated number six best 
campus housing in the entire United States. Um, we have multiple gyms on campus. So near every cluster of apartment, we have a gym. So that way you don't have to walk far to get your workout in. Um, there's three different pools. So it's Phoenix is always hot. You want to jump in that pool as many times as you can. We do have um, your standard cafeteria like most schools have, but we also have popular eateries like Chick-fil-A, Habit Burger Grill, Cadoba, um, Jamba Juice, so many options. And a really nice thing is that your meal plan works for all of those popular eateries. So you're not spending additional money on top of what you would spend for the meal plan. We have campus events. So as a GCU student, you get a free ticket to every single sporting event. You also get free access to large events we have on campus, like our Mr. GCU pageant, lip sync battle, all the way down to small events we might have like Giant Twister and Silent Disco. The nice thing about GCU is that again, we're located right in Phoenix. So we're about 30 minutes from downtown, actually we're about 10 minutes from downtown Phoenix. And then a lot of our students, they go on outdoor adventure trips to Sedona, Grand Canyon. We have trips to Las Vegas, San Diego and more. So there's definitely opportunities for you to explore outside of GCU and get a full experience. As I mentioned, we are division one athletic school. So we do not have football, but we pretty much have everything else. We are a huge basketball school. So even if you are not a basketball fan, I promise you will be by the time you leave GCU. Our student group called the Havocs, they were rated the number one college party in college basketball by ESPN. So that is something to look forward to. If you are interested in athletics, but not really the D1 side, we have club sports as well. Um, so just like D1, you have to try out, you have regular practices and they go out and compete against other schools. And there are also some scholarship opportunities involved with club sports. Um, just to wrap up, this is on average what tuition looks like with, um, with room and board and fees. We base your scholarship based off of your weighted GPA. And as a St. Ignatius student, you will get an automatic additional scholarship of $4,000 a year. Um, you can apply at apply.gcu.edu. If you are a junior, our application for fall 2022 is open. And if you're a senior still looking for a home, we will gladly accept your application for fall 2021 as well. And I will post my information in the chat. Great, thank you so much to Grand Canyon University. And next up we have the University of Southern California. Hello and good evening. Um, I'm happy to uh, be joining you all this evening. I'm gonna try and share my screen here as well. So uh, uh, we can see a little bit about the university. Um, I also wanna thank some of our uh, folks here in the group. It looks like we've got even some members of the Trojan family uh, with St. Ignatius Connections joining us this evening. So glad to see that. Um, so first off, the University of Southern California, we are one of the largest private research universities in the United States. Um, our average class size though is just 26 students. So one of the things I often point out is that at USC, you get that large school opportunity in terms of the majors and the opportunities and the clubs and organizations, but you still get the academic benefit of a small elite private school. Uh, you can see here our student to faculty ratio show as well. Um, when we talk about the university, there's a number of factors that I think make USC very distinct. Now, a number of my colleagues have talked about similar things, and I will say it looks like they grouped us by who's in warm climate. So I think we're taking advantage in our session this evening on being in warmer locales. Um, but USC does have a lot of interdisciplinary study opportunity for you. Um, like my colleagues tonight, uh, we have over 150 different majors, and most students at USC are studying more than one thing. We have six distinct schools of art. So maybe you know you want to be computer science, but you still want to take classes in music or get a minor in dance. Or maybe you want to be political science in your pre-law, but you didn't want to give up your business interests. You want to get a minor in the Marshall School of Business. You can combine or take courses across any discipline at USC. So that's all available to you. USC is also very much a global institution. We have one of the largest international student populations of any four-year school, but we also send the majority of our students overseas during the course of their undergraduate program. And at any given point when we're not during a pandemic, we usually have over 2,000 students studying abroad um, with the university. We do summer programs, traditional academic year programs as well. Um, we do have a lot of research opportunities that you can take advantage of being a premier top tier research institution that you can take advantage of 
as of day one in your program. This is not something you have to wait till you're a junior or senior. You can take advantage of that right away. Um, also in terms of Los Angeles, LA is USC's campus town. We are a traditional park-like campus, beautiful. I know I'm biased, but it's a gorgeous campus. But you also have the city of Los Angeles as your campus town. You have all the nightlife, entertainment, shopping, and culture, the internship opportunities. So you can get actual internship experience while you're an undergraduate. And of course, we also have the beaches, the mountains, the desert, the year-round outdoor climate that uh, my colleagues have been talking about this evening for you to take advantage of as well. USC is very well known for our campus life and student engagement. We rank very well as student engagement, both with students engaging with their faculty members and their peers, but also in terms of campus life and student organizations. We have over 80 organizations just that are religious in nature, um, but we also have professional societies societies, fraternities, sororities, the opportunity to be involved in service-based programs, um, lots of ways for our students to be engaged, as well as, of course, um, athletics, both club, intramural, um, as well as Division I. And the Trojan family is a huge part of the USC experience. We've got over 300,000 living alumni worldwide who are there to help support our students, provide internships, mentoring, um, but also just supporting the university in terms of helping out with merit scholarships and those type of things as well. It's that combination of those factors that I think makes USC a really unique option for our applicants. Now, as far as the application goes, we are on the common application and that's uh, available usually about August 1st, they open that up to you. But I want to emphasize to you that we also have a USC writing supplement. If you are applying to one of our six schools of art, you will also have additional supplements, portfolio materials, auditions required for those programs. But the common application and the supplement, the most important features are going to be that academic record, as well as how you can speak to the fit you see with USC. And that is part of our supplement. We do for financial aid meet 100% of your demonstrated financial need. And about 20% of our students every year receive merit-based scholarships. So your application for admission is also your application for, for merit-based scholarships. For need-based aid, we use the FAFSA as well as the CSS profile form. I wanna emphasize on application deadlines because I get this question a lot. USC is one of the few elite private schools that does not have early decision or early action programs. So you apply by December 1st to be considered for merit-based scholarships or for some of those arts programs that have additional application or supplement materials like music or the School of Cinematic Arts, um, Kaufman School of Dance. But we also have our final application deadline of January 15th. I can tell you students, if any of you have a parent listening right now, you should be applying by December 1st because there's no reason you want to be left out of the merit scholarship process. Um, I wanna add on that my contact information is on the screen. I am your counselor. So um, I would be the one working with all students from St. Ignatius. We have a lot of great virtual programs and tours, information sessions, student panels, opportunities for you to talk with us more. So I encourage you to take advantage of those as well. And I will post the link to that information in the chat as well. So thanks very much. And uh, as we say at USC, fight on. All right, thank you so much to the University of Southern California. And that was actually our last presenter for this evening, but we still do have a few uh, minutes left, about uh, six or seven minutes left. So I would like to invite all of our presenters to go ahead and turn their cameras back on so we can do a little round robin uh, Q&A here. And the first question I have for all of you is, what advice would you give someone going through the college search process? And we'll go ahead and start with the University of Oklahoma. Yeah, so my piece of advice for those going through the college search process is to make sure that the schools, the colleges, the universities that you're looking into have multiple programs, like academic programs that interest you. So if you're undecided, you're already doing that. But if you are like, focused in on one very specific major, I just encourage you to make sure that the schools you're looking into for that program have other options. Just if 
something happens and you don't end up pursuing that program, now you don't have to find a new institution to transfer to because the school that you chose hopefully has a second major or a third option that will also work with ever the road takes you. And uh, how about Alabama? Yeah, my recommendation for students in the college search process, um, it's probably gonna sound like a broken record, but applying early and um, just by being here tonight is a great first step to getting to know all these universities. But, you know, because of this pandemic, there are so many resources available to you right now of pre-recorded presentations for universities across the United States and around the world. So really take advantage of that. And one way that you can really organize all that information, it's gonna sound a little bit, a little bit geeky, but create an Excel sheet. Um, I love Excel, but especially for the college search process, Create a column of the schools, um, where they're located, what their scholarship deadline is, what application they prefer, and all of the requirements for their application process. Because then in your mind, you can see, oh, the University of Alabama has a super quick and easy application that opens in July. I can do that one first, and then I can attack applications that maybe have more components to them. So that will just help you organize yourself in your mind. So stay organized and stay engaged. How about Nova Southeastern? All right, for me, my advice would be um, start having the um, asking yourself questions, having your negotiables and non-negotiables. Um, are you more of like a small university? Are you looking for a bigger universities? Do you want to stay in Illinois or do you want to move to Florida and assign South Florida? That kind of a questions. Ask yourself those kind of questions. And another one for me is use your resources. You have your family, you have your parents, you have your guidance counselors, and you have us. You have your admissions counselors. Ask us questions. Call, email us if you have any questions at all. My turn. Yay. Yeah, um, go ahead. Similar in theme, my biggest piece of advice to all the students and families I work with is just really do your research. You can see just from this event alone, our institutions have a lot of similarities, but a lot of differences as well. And so, um, like Caesar said, you have a lot of resources, but really spend time researching institutions at a deeper level, because then you're really going to be able to find the select ones that are a good fit for you, what you want to do inside the classroom, what you want to do outside of the classroom and then you're also able to use that knowledge to set yourself apart in your application we're looking for those students who know us at a deeper level and can envision themselves in different areas of our campus so not only are you benefiting yourself in your future by doing your research but you're able to um, strategically tailor your applications as well uh, my piece of advice would be that there's no such thing as asking too many questions. Um, I know a lot of times you might be like, oh, I don't wanna bother this person. Um, as an admissions counselor, we are here to serve as your resource. And I'll speak for myself. I would much rather you prefer you ask me as many questions as possible than for you to be unsure about your decision. So just ask whatever, small questions, big questions, whatever you can think of. <laughs> uh, my colleagues had some great suggestions for you. So instead of repeating all of those, um, I would say think about your fit for your different institutions. Think about what's important to you, as my colleagues mentioned, and think about whether that school seems like a good fit and think of how you are going to express that to your individual colleges. So when you fill out your applications, it shouldn't be, even though we talk about a common application, there is gonna be pieces and opportunities for you to make it a distinct application for each of the colleges to which you apply. So make sure you're addressing that, that you're not doing a generic answer when they say, why are you looking at my institution? So really think about that fit and apply to places where you feel a fit, not where your parent, your counselor, your next door neighbor, your best buddy finds a fit, but where you see a fit for yourself. And good luck with the process. All right, thank you so much. A lot of great, great advice there. Um, and actually that has taken us right to the end of our session tonight. So I do want to say thank you so much to all of our presenters for sharing information about their schools. Uh, hopefully that helped all of you. I also want to thank all of you for joining us tonight too. When you close this window, there is going to be a link to a very quick four question survey. Um, so we'd appreciate any feedback that you can provide us on this session. 
Uh, also remember that you can ask your St. Ignatius counselors questions about the college search in that counselor corner. And lastly, in about a week, you will be able to find this session's recording as well as all of the other session recordings at strivescan.com Ignatius. All right, thanks again, everyone, and have a good evening.